Here's why growing one client at a time will eventually destroy your business. Hey guys, if you're a tech company, most people out there will tell you that you're not growing enough because your cost to acquire a customer is too high. You have a problem with your product. You have a problem with your team. All those different issues that everyone will tell you about. Your, your churn rate is too high. Your, your MRR is too low. All those different terms and ideas. And you believe that this is what's holding you back from growing your business. Here's the problem with growing one client at a time. Guys, you're going out there. You're paying a lot of money to acquire a customer. And the problem is that all the big companies are starting to go online right now, which is means that your cost to acquire a customer right now will be, I mean, it's nothing compared to what it'll be in a year or two years from now, where all the big guys are gonna spend most of their money online. When that will happen, it means your expenses are gonna be much higher. It means that your profitability is gonna be much lower, if any. And in the end of the day, why businesses fail? They fail because they have a lack of profit, which leads to a lot, lack of cash flow. When you have no cash flow, it's basically a matter of time before you need to shut down your doors and close your business. Like 99% of the businesses out there, unfortunately. You need to understand something that is working for you right now won't work for you in a year or two years from now to get a client because of those big guys. And the biggest problem that you have isn't that your acquisition cost to acquire a customer is high. is isn't because you don't sure about this or that in your business, if it's your team, or you're not sure about your processes or how your marketing looks like, or maybe that, that the design isn't good enough to, to get or get the right retention with those clients. Those are not your problems, guys. Your problem is that you're thinking like a small company. You're not thinking like a big company and you gotta look at what the big companies out there are doing to basically meet their shareholder demands, to meet their growth demands. And the reason that you're not growing as fast as you want or that you'll have problems with growing one client at a time is because you're not thinking like those big guys. You must ask yourself what the big guys are doing that you're not. And I'm here to tell you, they're doing deals and they have access to capital. Those are the two main things that they're doing that you probably don't. It's, I mean, that's the reason. That's the reason that Facebook is buying companies like WhatsApp and Instagram. That's the reason that Google bought YouTube. That's the reason that Apple did deals with Nike. That's the reason that Starbucks did deals with Oprah. They're doing deals and they have access to capital from the public market. Now, I'm not telling you to do an IPO because you're probably a small business, but I'm telling you that you can do the same in a smaller scale. You can access capital from financial institutions, from investors, and go out there and raise capital to not just grow organically with your product, because I don't think that's enough. If your business is solely dependent on like one marketing source or one distribution channel, it's gonna be really hard for you to scale. Now, the one thing you can do is continue to grow organically, test different places to, to get more customers, or, or creating new products internally, you can do all those or hire one people, one client, one employee at a time. You can do all that or you can go and buy a company or do a deal with a company that already did that, that already have a track record. You can go and buy a business that's existing for five years, 10 years, some of your complementary businesses in your sector, some of your competitors, and you can buy them using OPM, other people's money, and raise capital, not from the public market, you don't need to do an IPO for that, but you can even use the acquisition target assets as a leverage to pay for its own business. That's what we call a leverage buyout. And there are tons of different other deals that you can do like strategic partnerships that will help you scale so much faster and give you access to all of those assets and clients. So for example, right now you're trying to grow one client at a time. You're paying so much money to find those clients in different advertising channels. You're promoting here and advertising there. And you're testing all those different sources that many of them are not bringing you any positive ROI or returns on your investments. Instead, what you can do is go and buy existing business who already have those processes to bring in clients. And not just that you'll get access to his processes to find those clients, but you'll also get access to his existing list of clients, which you can then cross sell and have cost saving opportunities and the upside there is amazing, which will all go down to your bottom line, to your profit, because you won't have those costs of testing different platforms again and again and again. And same goes with innovating products from within and testing different things with new products or testing different procedures to hire better talent. All of those different things that you're testing and trying out in your business, you can just access in someone else's business. Now, having that strategy of raising capital, doing deals, that's amazing, but you also gotta have an accountability and support system. That's why the big companies out there have board of advisors. That's why they, they have those meetings again and again and again 
to make sure that they're moving forward with those strategies and they're actually progressing versus resting on their lowers and being okay with their results. I mean, you gotta copy what the big guys are doing and put it into action into your small business.